Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to write conditional formatting rules that change the formatting of one or many cells based on the value of a different cell. And to demonstrate this concept, I will cover three examples. For example one, I will show you how to add conditional formatting to add color to one set of cells based on the values in another set of cells. Then for example two, I will show you how to add conditional formatting to highlight the entire row based on the selected status for each individual task. And finally, for example three, I will show you how to add conditional formatting to create this crosshair effect that you see here based on the selected exam and student. Let's start with example number one. The goal is to write a conditional formatting rule that will add a green fill color to the cell next to any task marked with the status of done. In other words, if you mark cell D6 as done, then you want cell B6 to have a green fill color. Now before we create this conditional formatting rule, there are two important notes that I want to mention. The first is that when you create a conditional formatting rule using a formula, then that formula must evaluate to either true or false and nothing else. The second important note is that when you write a conditional formatting formula for a range of cells, you always write your formula from the perspective of the top left most cell of that range. And both of these notes will make a lot more sense as we move along. Now back to the task at hand. You know that you want to apply the formatting to the range of cells next to the tasks. So start by selecting this range of cells. After that, go to Home, Conditional Formatting, and New Rule. Now whenever you are trying to create a conditional formatting rule for one range that is dependent on the cells of another range, then you need to select the option use a formula to determine which cells to format. And now you will see the box where you will add your formula. And you may notice that the text above reads, format values where this formula is true. And that aligns with our first note, which was that any conditional formatting formula must evaluate to either true or false. If the formula or rule evaluates to true, then the formatting is applied. And if the formula evaluates to false, then the formatting is not applied. Although this is fairly simple, it is very important to remember. Now what about the second note? When you write a conditional formatting formula for a range of cells, like we are in this case, you always write your formula from the perspective of the top left most cell of that range. And in this case, the top left most cell is cell B4. So we know that your formula must evaluate to true or false, and we also know that your formula must be written from the perspective of cell B4. With this in mind, we want cell B4 to turn green whenever cell D4 contains the value of done. And so we write the formula equals D4 equals and then done in quotation marks. Now let's break this formula down. The first equal sign merely indicates that this is a formula, and that's because all formulas in Excel begin with an equal sign. Now after that, we have D4, and then equals, and then done. This part of the formula is testing to see if the value in D4 is equivalent to the text of done. And when you include text like this in a formula, you must surround that text with quotation marks like we have here. And so if the value in cell D4 is equal to done, then this formula will return true. If the value in D4 is not equal to done, then this formula will return false. Now that's great, and it makes sense from the perspective of cell B4. But what about all of the other cells in this range? For example, you want the rule for B5 to test if D5 is equivalent to done, not D4. 
and you want the rule for b6 to test if d6 is equal to done, and so on and so forth. Well, just like normal formulas in Excel, if you do not include dollar signs in a cell reference within a formula, then it is a relative reference and it will change if the formula is copied somewhere else. And so, if you consider the formula that we have right here, it starts in the top leftmost cell, which is cell B4. But any relative references in this formula will change when the formula is considered for other cells of the selected range. And so, for cell B5, even though we can't see it, the formula will actually be equals D5 equals done. There are no dollar signs in this formula, so the reference changes for each cell that this conditional formatting rule applies to. And so, for cell B6, the formula is actually equals D6 equals done. Hopefully this is starting to click a little bit, but this is the toughest part of writing conditional formatting rules like this, so feel free to watch this section of the video back a few times until it starts to make a little more sense. That said, now that you have your conditional formatting formula written, all that's left is to set the formatting. So click on the format button, click on the fill tab, pick the color you want, and then click OK, and then OK. Now, any task marked as done will have a green indicator next to it automatically. Let's take a look at example two. This time, the goal is to highlight the entire row based on the selected status for each individual task. For example, if you mark a task as done, you want a light green fill color for the entire row. And if you mark a task as in work, you want a light yellow fill color for the entire row. So to begin, start by selecting the entire range where you want to apply the potential formatting. So you select B4 through D9. Next, go to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now let's say that you want to create the rule for done first, so click on the format button. Under the fill tab, select a light green, and then click on OK. Now comes the hard part, the formula. We know that the formula must evaluate to true or false, and we also know that we want to write the formula from the perspective of the top left most cell, which in this case is cell B4. Okie dokie. So you enter equals to start the formula, and then you want the fill color to be applied when the value in D4 is equivalent to the value in F5, which is of course done. So you go ahead and select cell D4, and then equals, and then select cell F5. Now you will notice that when you select cells to add their references to the formula, Excel automatically adds in dollar signs to all of the references. The big question is, which dollar signs do you keep and which dollar signs do you get rid of? Well, you know that you want the F5 reference to stay the same for every cell within your selected range. In other words, regardless of which status is entered for any task, you are checking for the value of done in cell F5. Therefore, you leave the dollar signs in the F5 reference. Now what about the D4 reference? You want your formula to check the status values in column D against the value in cell F4. And so, if you draw arrows to show this relationship, what do you see? You see that the difference between all of these comparisons is a change in row. However, you are only checking values in column D in no other column. Therefore, you want the column letter of D to stay the same in this formula, but on the other hand, you want the row number to change. And so, you leave the dollar sign in front of the D, and you remove the dollar sign in front of the 4. 
Now before hitting OK, let's imagine how this formula will change for a few of the cells in the selected range. For cell B4, the formula is the same. Equals D4 equals F5. Now what about the formula for cell B5? It would be equals D5 equals F5. You can see that the row number for the first reference changed. Now what about the formula for cell C6? This formula would be equals D6 equals F5. Now what happened here? The column letter of D did not change even though we moved over one column. And that's because there is a dollar sign in front of the D to keep it from changing. But the row number changed as we went down another row because there is no dollar sign in front of this part of the reference to keep it from changing. And so you get cell C6 looking at the relationship between cell D6 and F5, which is exactly what you want. And now that we've looked at a few examples, you can go ahead and click on OK to apply the formatting. And now the tasks marked as done are highlighted in green automatically. Let's create one more rule to highlight in yellow the tasks marked as in work. To start, select the range of cells where you want to apply the formatting. And then go to conditional formatting, new rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now for the formula, enter in equals dollar sign D4 equals, and then select cell F4. Once again, we have the dollar sign in front of the D because we only want to consider the values in column D, but there is no dollar sign in front of the row number four. So this part of the reference will change for each row of the selected data. And of course, the F4 reference has both dollar signs, ensuring that this reference does not change at all. At this point, you can go ahead and click on the Format button. And under the Fill tab, select the light yellow color, and then click OK, and then OK. Now, any task marked as in work will be highlighted in yellow, and any task marked as done will be highlighted in green. Awesome. Let's move on to our final example. Here we have a list of students and their scores for five different exams. The goal this time is to write three conditional formatting rules that will create this crosshair effect that you see here, which highlights the relevant row and column in yellow and the intersection in red with white text. Let's start with highlighting the row for the selected student. And so you begin by selecting all of the cells where you want to apply the formatting. So you select the range C4 through G9, then go to conditional formatting, new rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now, how do we write the formula? Let's go back to our two major notes. The formula must result in either true or false, and you want to write the formula from the perspective of the top left most cell of the selected range. And in this case, that is cell C4. So from the perspective of cell C4, you want this cell to be formatted whenever B4 matches the selected student in cell J4. So you write equals, select B4, and then equals, and select J4. Now what about the dollar signs? Well, you don't want the J4 reference to change at all, so you leave both dollar signs on this reference. But what about the B4 reference? You know that you want your conditional formatting to reference the cells containing the student names. And all of these names are in column B, but they are in different rows. And so you want the column letter to stay the same, and you want the row number to change. Therefore, you get rid of the dollar signs in front of row number four, and you leave the dollar sign in front of column letter B. That completes your formula, so you can go ahead and click on Format, and under the Fill tab, select the light yellow color, 
and click OK and then OK. Now, when you change the name of the selected student, you can see the conditional formatting is working properly. Awesome. Let's do the column conditional formatting next. The goal is to highlight the entire column for the selected exam in cell J3. And so, start by selecting all of the cells that you want to format, which is C4 through G9, and then go to Conditional Formatting, New Rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format. For the formula, it must result in either true or false, and you want to write the formula from the perspective of the top leftmost cell of the selected range, which is of course cell C4. So, from the perspective of cell C4, you want to format this cell whenever cell C3 is equal to cell J3. So, you enter equals, select C3, and then equals, and select J3. Now what about the dollar signs? Once again, you don't want that second reference, or the J3 reference, to change at all, so you leave the dollar signs on this one. Now what about the C3 reference? This time, all of the exams are listed in row 3, but each exam is in a different column, so you want the row number to stay the same and the column letter to change. That being the case, get rid of the dollar sign in front of the column letter and leave the dollar sign in front of the row number. That completes the formula, so you can go ahead and click on Format. And then, under the Fill tab, select the light yellow color, and click on OK, and then OK. Awesome. Two down, one to go. For the final conditional formatting rule, you want to highlight the intersection point with a red fill color and a white font color. And so, once again, you start by selecting all of the cells that you want to format, which is of course the range C4 through G9. Then, you go to Conditional Formatting, New Rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format. At this point, let's take a look at our two notes one more time. The formula must result in either true or false, and you write the formula from the perspective of the top left most cell. OK, with these notes in mind, we know that we need to check for two things this time instead of just one. In other words, we are checking to see which exam is selected and which student is selected. And then we highlight the cell that shares a row with the selected student and shares a column with the selected exam. So two conditions must be true to apply the conditional formatting. That being the case, we need to write a formula that evaluates two conditions and returns true only if both conditions are satisfied. This means we will need to use the AND function within our formula. The AND function tests multiple conditions and returns true only if all of the conditions are true. With this in mind, let's write the formula. All formulas begin with an equal sign, so we enter in equals, and then next, enter in the AND function. Now that you are inside the AND function, each argument of this function should represent a different condition or logical test. And so, let's say that the first thing that you are testing for is the selected student. Now you still want to write your formula from the perspective of the top left most cell, which is cell C4. And you want cell C4 to be formatted if the student in cell B4 matches the student in cell J4. So you select B4, then enter equals, and select J4. Now before moving on, make sure that you get the dollar signs right. In this case, all of the students are listed in column B, but are in different rows. So you want to keep the column letter the same and allow the row number to change. This means that you keep the dollar sign in front of the column letter and remove the dollar sign in front of the row number. As for the J4 reference, you want this reference to stay the same, so you leave both dollar signs. 
That completes the first test or first argument of the AND function, so go ahead and add a comma to move to the second argument. Now for the second test, you want to see which exam matches the selected exam in cell J3. And from the perspective of cell C4, you want this cell to be formatted whenever the value in C3 matches the value in J3. And so you select C3, and then enter equals, and select J3. Now for the dollar signs. All of the exams are listed in row 3, but are in different columns. This means that you want the row number to stay the same, but the column letter to change. So you remove the dollar sign in front of the column letter and keep the dollar sign in front of the row number. As for the J3 reference, you want this reference to stay the same, so you keep both dollar signs. And that completes the final test, so you can close parentheses to complete the AND function. And that is also the end of your formula, so now all you have to do is click on the format button and set up the formatting. Under the fill tab, select the bold dark red color. And then under the font tab, select the color white and also bold the text. You can then click OK and then OK. Your conditional formatting is now complete and you have achieved the desired crosshair effect for example number three. I know that this video is a lot and it may be tough to grasp upon your first watch through, but I encourage you to watch it as many times as you need until the concepts really stick. And that said, thank you so much for watching and I really hope that you were able to learn something new and truly understand the concepts presented. I also encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss any content like this. And until next time, I will see you in the next Spreadsheet Life video.